Hello and welcome to day 217 of our Bible in a Year Challenge. My name is Sandra. I'm going to be your host for today. Welcome. We are committed to reading and fellowshipping with God's Word every single day of this year, 2024. Please kindly go ahead right now, subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Aruleba. Let's get started. Let us say a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you with grateful hearts as we gather to read and reflect on your Holy Word on this 217th day of our journey through the Bible. Thank you for your steadfast love, your faithfulness, and the wisdom you have imparted to us through your scriptures. As we open the Bible today, we ask for the guidance of your Holy Spirit, illuminate our minds, and open our hearts to receive the truths you have prepared for us. Help us to understand the depth and breadth of your word and give us the grace to apply it to our lives in meaningful ways. Lord, we seek your presence in this time of study. May your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, guiding us in all our ways. Let the lessons we learn today strengthen our faith, renew our minds, and draw us closer to you. We pray for clarity and insight as we read. May your scriptures inspire us, challenge us, and transform us so that we may live lives that honor and glorify you. Help us to not only be hearers of your word, but do us, faithfully living out the principles we learn. Bless this time of reading, Lord. May it be enriching and uplifting, filling us with your peace, your joy, and your understanding. We commit this time to you, trusting that you will speak to us through your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Day 217, August 5th, 2024, 365 Days Bible Reading, Old Testament, 1 Chronicles 19, 1 Chronicles 20. 1 Chronicles 21. New Testament, 1 Corinthians 1, 18 to 31. 1 Corinthians 2, 1 to 5. Psalms and Proverbs, Psalm 91, verse 1 to 8. Old Testament, NIV version, 1 Chronicles 19, 1 to 19. David defeats the Ammonites. In the course of time, Nahash, king of the Ammonites, died. And his son succeeded him as king. David thought, I will show kindness to Hanun, son of Nahash, because his father showed kindness to me. So David sent a delegation to express his sympathy to Hanun concerning his father. When David's envoys came to Hanun in the land of the Ammonites to express sympathy to him, the Ammonite commander said to Hanun, do you think David is honoring your father by sending envoys to you to express sympathy? Haven't his envoys come to you only to explore and spy out the country and overthrow it? So Hanun seized David's envoys, shaved them, cut off their garments at the buttocks and sent them away. When someone came and told David about the men, he sent messengers to meet them, for they were greatly humiliated. The king said, Stay at Jericho till your beards have grown and then come back. When the Ammonites realized that they had been obnoxious to David, Hanun and the Ammonites sent a thousand talents of silver to hire chariots and charities from Aram, Naharaim, Aram, Maka, and Zobah. They hired 32,000 chariots and charities, as well as the king of Maka <coughs> with his troops. Who came and camped near Mediba, while the Ammonites were mustered from their towns and moved out for battle. On hearing this, David sent Joab out with the entire army of fighting men. The Ammonites came out and drew up in battle formation at the entrance to their city, while the kings who had come were by themselves in the open country. Joab saw that there were battle lines in front of him and behind him, so he selected some of the best troops in Israel and deployed them against the Arameans. He put the rest of the men 
under the command of Abishai his brother, and they were deployed against the Ammonites. Joab said, If the Arameans are too strong for me, then you are to rescue me. But if the Ammonites are too strong for you, then I will rescue you. Be strong and let us fight bravely for our people and the cities of our God. The Lord will do what is good in his sight. Then Joab and the troops with him advanced to fight the Arameans and they fled before him. When the Ammonites realized that the Arameans were fleeing, they too fled before his brother Abishai and went inside the city. So Joab went back to Jerusalem. After the Arameans saw that they had been routed by Israel, they sent messengers and had Arameans brought from beyond the Euphrates River with Shophak, the commander of Hadadezer's army, leading them. When David was told of this, he gathered all Israel and crossed the Jordan. He advanced against them and formed his battle lines opposite them. David formed his lines to meet the Arameans in battle and they fought against him. But they fled before Israel and David killed 7,000 of their charioteers and 40,000 of their foot soldiers. He also killed Shophak, the commander of their army. When the vassals of Hadadezer saw that they had been routed by Israel, they made peace with David and became subject to him. So the Arameans were not willing to help the Ammonites anymore. 1 Chronicles 21-8 The capture of Rabbah In the spring, at the time when kings go off to war, Joab led out the armed forces. He laid waste the land of the Ammonites and went to Rabbah and besieged it. But David remained in Jerusalem. Joab attacked Rabbah and left it in ruins. David took the crown from the head of their king. Its weight was found to be a talent of gold and it was set with precious stones and it was placed on David's head. He took a great quantity of plunder from the city and brought out the people who were there, consigning them to labor with saws and with iron picks and axes. David did this to all the Ammonite towns. Then David and his entire army returned to Jerusalem, war with the Philistines. In the course of time, war broke out with the Philistines at Gezer. At that time, Sibekai, the Hushathite, killed Sipai, one of the descendants of the Rephaites, and the Philistines were subjugated. In another battle with the Philistines, El Elhanan, son of Jair, killed Lami, the brother of Goliath the Gittite, who had a spear with a shaft like a weaver's rod. In still another battle which took place at Gath, there was a huge man with six fingers, one on, on each hand and six toes on each foot, twenty-four in all. He also was descended from Rapha. When he taunted Israel, Jonathan, son of Shimei, David's brother, killed him. These were the descendants of Rapha in Gath, and they fell at the hands of David and his men. First Chronicles 21, 1-30 David counts the fighting men. Satan rose up against Israel and incited David to take a census of Israel. So David said to Joab and the commanders of the troops, Go and count the Israelites from Beersheba to Dan. Then... Report back to me so that I may know how many they are. But Joab replied, May the Lord multiply his troops a hundred times over. My lord the king, are they not all my lord's subjects? Why does my lord want to do this? Why should he bring guilt on Israel? The king's word, however, overruled Joab. So Joab left and went throughout Israel and then came back to Jerusalem. Joab reported the number of the fighting men to David. In all, Israel, there were 1,100,000 men who could handle a sword, including 470,000 in Judah. But Joab did not include Levi and Benjamin in the numbering because the king's command was repulsive to him. 
This command was also evil in the sight of God, so he punished Israel. Then David said to God, I have sinned greatly by doing this. Now, I beg you, take away the guilt of your servant. I have done a very foolish thing. The Lord said to David, to God, David, see here. Go and tell David. This is what the Lord says. I am giving you three options. Choose one of them for me to carry out against you. So God went to David and said to him, This is what the Lord says. Take your choice. Three years of famine. Three months of being swept away before your enemies with your swords overtaken, overtaking you. Or three days of the sword of the Lord. Days of plague in the land with the angel of the Lord ravaging every part of Israel. Now then decide how I should answer the one who sent me. David said to God, I am in deep distress. Let me fall into the hands of of the Lord for his mercy is very great but do not let me fall into human hands so the Lord sent a plague on Israel and 70,000 men of Israel fell dead and God sent an angel to and God sent an angel to destroy is Jerusalem but as the angel was doing so the Lord saw it and relented concerning the disaster and said to the angel who was destroying the people Enough, withdraw your hand. The angel of the Lord was then standing at the threshing floor of Aruna, the Jebusite. David looked up and saw the angel of the Lord, standing between heaven and earth with a drawn sword in his hand, extended over Jerusalem. Then David the elders, clothed in sackcloth, fell face down. David said to God, Was it not I who ordered the fighting men to be counted? I, the shepherd, have sinned and done wrong. These are but sheep. What have they done, Lord my God? Let your hand fall on me and my family, but do not let this plague remain on your people. David built an altar. Then the angel of the Lord ordered God to tell David to go up and build an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Aruna the Jebusite. So David went up in obedience to the word that God had spoken in the name of the Lord. While Aruna was threshing wheat, he turned and saw the angel. His four sons who were with him hid themselves. Then David approached, and when Aruna looked and saw him, he left the threshing floor and bowed down before David with his face to the ground. David said to him, Let me have the sight of your threshing floor so I can build an altar to the Lord, that the plague on the people may be stopped. Sell it to me at the full price. Aruna said to David, Take it. Let my lord the king do whatever pleases him. Look, I will give the oxen for the burnt offerings, the threshing sledges for the wood, and the wheat for the grain offering. I will give all this. But David replied to Aruna, No, I insist on paying the full price. I will not take for the lord <clears throat> what is yours or sacrifice a burnt offering that costs me nothing. So David paid Aruna 600 shekels of gold for the site. David built an altar to the Lord there and sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. He called on the Lord and the Lord answered him with fire from heaven on the altar of burnt offering. Then the Lord spoke to the angel and he put his sword back into its sheath. At that time when David saw that the Lord had answered him on the threshing floor of Aruna the Jebusite, he offered sacrifices there. The tabernacle of the Lord, <clears throat> which Moses had made in the wilderness, and the altar of burnt offering, were at that time on the high place of Gibeon. But David could not go before it to inquire of God, because he was afraid of the sword of the angel of the Lord. New Testament, NIV version, 1 Corinthians 1, 18-31 Christ crucified is God's power and wisdom. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? 
For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believed. Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential, but many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things, and the things that are not to nullify the things that are, so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God, that is, our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore it is written, Let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. 1 Corinthians 2, 1-5 And so it was with me, brothers and sisters. When I came to you, I did not come with eloquence or human wisdom, as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you, except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I came to you in weakness, with great fear and trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with the demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. Psalms and Proverbs Psalm 91 verse 1 to 8 Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midnight. A thousand may fall at your sight, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. Amen. Lessons learned from First Chronicles 19 misunderstanding and conflict the passage begins with the ammonites misunderstanding david's intentions leading to conflict this teaches the importance of seeking to understand others intentions and communicating clearly to avoid unnecessary conflict divine assistance in battle david's victories despite the odds show that god provides assistance and victory to those who trust in him it emphasizes the importance of relying on God's strength rather than solely on human might. Lessons learned from 1 Chronicles 20 God's Sovereignty in Victory The chapter recounts various military victories emphasizing that success comes from God's sovereignty and blessing. It reminds believers to give credit to God for their achievements and victories. Overcoming Giants David and his men overcame giants in battle, symbolizing the power of faith and God's help in overcoming seemingly insurmountable obstacles. Lessons learned from 1 Chronicles 21 Consequences of Sin David's decision to conduct a census against God's will brought severe consequences demonstrating that disobedience to God's commands leads to serious repercussions. Repentance and Mercy David's repentance and God's mercy in stopping the plague highlight the importance of genuine repentance and God's readiness to show mercy when we turn back to him. Sacrificial Offering David's insistence in offering a sacrifice that cost him something 
teaches the principle that true worship and repentance often require personal sacrifice. Lessons learned from 1 Corinthians 1, 18 to 31. The power of the cross. Paul emphasizes that the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but is a power of God to those who are being saved. This teaches the transformative power of the gospel and the importance of, em of embracing it, despite how it may be perceived by the world. God's wisdom versus human wisdom. The passage contrasts God's wisdom with human wisdom, showing that God's ways are higher and often contrary to human expectations. It encourages believers to trust in God's wisdom rather than their own. Boasting in the Lord, Paul reminds believers that their calling, righteousness, and redemption are all from God, leaving no room for personal boasting. It teaches humility and the importance of giving glory to God for all things. Lessons learned from 1 Corinthians 2, 1-5 Relying on God's power Paul's approach to preaching emphasizes reliance on the power of the Holy Spirit rather than on human wisdom or eloquence. This teaches the importance of relying on God's power in ministry and life rather than on our abilities. Faith rooted in God's power Paul's aim was for the Corinthians' faith to rest on God's power, not on human wisdom. This highlights the need for a faith that is deeply rooted in the reality and power of God. Lessons learned from Psalm 91 verse 1 to 8. God's protection. This psalm emphasizes God's protection for those who dwell in his shelter, portraying him as a refuge and fortress. It reassures believers of God's constant protection and care. Trust in God. The verses encourage believers to trust in God's faithfulness and protection, even in the face of danger. It teaches the importance of placing our trust in God's ability to safeguard us. Deliverance from evil. The psalm promises deliverance from various forms of harm and evil, illustrating God's power to save and protect his people from all threats. These passages collectively teach the importance of understanding and communication to avoid conflict, reliance on God for victory and protection, the consequences of disobedience, the power of repentance, the transformative power of the gospel, humility and reliance on God's wisdom and power. They emphasize the need for faith and trust in God's protective and redemptive power in all aspects of life. Faith declarations from 1 Chronicles 19, 1 Chronicles 20, and 1 Chronicles 21. I declare that I will seek to understand others and communicate clearly to avoid unnecessary conflicts. I trust in God's strength and divine assistance in all my battles, knowing that He will provide victory and support when I rely on Him. I acknowledge that my successes and victories come from God's sovereignty and blessing. I give all credit and glory to God for my achievement. I believe that with faith in God, I can overcome any giant or obstacle in my path. I recognize the serious consequences of disobedience to God and I commit to following His commands faithfully. I confess my sins and I repent trusting in God's mercy and readiness to forgive. I understand that true worship and repentance require personal sacrifice and I am willing to offer my best to God. Faith declarations from 1 Corinthians 1, 18 to 31 and 1 Corinthians 2, 1 to 5. I embrace the message of the cross as a power of God for my salvation. I trust in God's wisdom knowing that it surpasses human understanding and expectations. I humble myself recognizing that my calling Righteousness and redemption are from God alone, and I boast only in the Lord. I rely on the power of the Holy Spirit rather than on human wisdom or eloquence. I seek to have my faith rooted in God's power, not in the wisdom of men. I declare that my trust is in the demonstration of the Spirit's power, ensuring that my faith rests on the solid foundation of God's strength. Faith declarations from Psalm 91, 
verse 1 to 8. I dwell in the shelter of the Most High, and I rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I declare that the Lord is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. I believe in God's protection and deliverance from all forms of harm and evil. I trust in his faithfulness to safeguard me, even in the face of danger. And I am confident in his power to save and protect me from all threats. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please, if you were blessed by the scriptures and you would like to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, kindly repeat this prayer after me, believing in your heart every single word you say. Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations. If you said this prayer, we are so excited to welcome you into God's family. Please kindly go ahead right now. Send us an email. Let us know you gave your heart to Christ. Someone is going to reach out to you and pray with you and help you in your new walk of faith. The email address is salvationinchrist101 at gmail.com. That is Salvation in Christ 101 at gmail.com. God bless you. Please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Areleba. Thank you so much for being here again today. It's always a blessing having you here. I look forward to another amazing day with you tomorrow. Have a blessed day today. I love you. Bye.